Happy New Year and welcome back to the Slideshow channel. It's a new year, all the kids are going back to school. Hope you've been practicing. The first videos we have coming out for you this year are the 2020 Aboda Regional Band Etudes. We've had a lot of requests for these etudes. We did the 2019 Aboda Etudes as well. I will put links to those down in the description if you want to check them out. We also did the TMEA etudes for 2019-2020 as well for Texas. You can check those out as well. I'll put the links down there. So each time we do these etude series, we're definitely trying to like up the ante, um, make them even better, make them even more useful. We've been getting a lot of feedback from you, our subscribers, um, to how we can make that work. We've been thinking, we want these etude videos to not just be useful to the high school students who are auditioning, but to any of the trombone players in our audience. So hopefully everyone can learn something from these etude videos and we can all help each other out. So if you have any questions, comments about anything, let us know down in the comments. So some things that we're changing with our etude series this year. Number one, in addition to a performance of the etude, we are gonna have the sheet music down below so anyone can play along, even if you don't already have the etudes. Um, you can follow along and learn them. We will also be including performance and practice tips specific to the etude. So for those who are auditioning, it can help you out in your practicing and preparation. And then we're also gonna include some general practice tips and audition preparation tips as well. Like I said, hopefully any trombone player or any musician can find these videos useful, not just the students who are auditioning this year. So one overarching theme that I want to talk about um, as we're going through this etude series it was something that one of my college teachers, Douglas Yeo, taught me. And it's the single piece of advice really helped me out um, in my audition preparation or just kind of the way I practice music these days. So the biggest thing when we are auditioning and the audition panel is asking specific etudes, specific excerpts, specific solos, we always have to ask ourselves two questions. The first question you need to ask yourself is, why are they asking this? Why are they asking this specific etude? What are they looking for? What are they looking to hear? So finding the answer to that is really gonna help you guide your practice so you can um, convey the right musical ideas that you want to convey. The second question you have to ask yourself is, where is the spot where everybody is going to mess up? Usually in etudes, there's an obvious spot, right? Maybe it's the highest note, maybe it's the lowest note, maybe it's the measure with the trickiest intervals, something like that. So the idea is if you can identify where that really difficult spot is, where you think everyone else is gonna mess up, and you put more effort into your practice time to getting that right, you're really gonna stand out. So the point um, when we're auditioning is we really wanna stand out from all of our competitors. Okay, so let's dive right into these questions for etude number one. So question number one, why are they asking this? What are they looking for? What do they wanna hear? I'm looking at my music right now. So in my opinion, what they're looking for in this is definitely a stylistic interpretation, making sure you're playing with the right sense of style. We'll go more into that later. The other thing I think is the articulations. If we're looking at this music here, I am seeing accents, staccatos, slurs, you know, marcados, all sorts of different articulation patterns, accents into slurs, and then a staccato, then a tenuto. So making sure that you can really decipher all these different articulations and show the difference in your playing. I think that's very important. Another thing I think is important to demonstrate in this etude is a steady time or a steady tempo. As you can see, there's no tempo changes in this etude anywhere in the music. So keeping like a really steady pulse the whole time uh, will really make you stand out if you're able to do that. I would definitely practice this one with a metronome. I mean, I would practice everything with a metronome, but especially for this uh, etude, uh, timing is very important, keeping a nice steady tempo. Okay, and then question number two, where is the spot where everyone is going to mess up? I bet you can, all can agree when you're looking at the music, you can see where the most difficult spot is. It is in measures seven and eight. We have all these different articulation changes back to back to back. Um, we have the accent with the slur and then a tongue note and then slur to, tongue to. <laughs> Also 
hope you notice there's a diminuendo the whole time too, so that could be quite challenging as well. Now we're in piano, and then we have these staccatos, and then the tenudos. Also, the intervals get kind of tricky throughout here. So I would definitely say measure seven and measure eight should be a huge focus to make sure you're executing those correctly. And when I talk about executing phrases correctly, it's very important when you're preparing for audition, never play any faster than you can play correctly. So I definitely recommend practicing this etude down tempo and then working it up as you find success. In Western art music or classical music, you may have already noticed this, but they use a lot of other languages written in the music. Some of the most common ones are Italian, German, and French. So you may not understand or know the meaning of these words right off the bat, but I encourage you, look them up. They are like little hints. They're describing words. They're telling you exactly how to play the music. So if you don't know what a word means, look it up. Now it's easier than ever. You all have smartphones, I'm assuming. You can just Google the definitions of these words and they will give you huge hints on how to play this music. Let's just go through and go over what some of these words mean. So the tempo marking for this piece is marziale. Excuse my Italian pronunciation. Marziale means martial and it indicates to play it in a march-like style. So you can kind of keep that in mind as you're playing this etude. It should sound like a march. The next word we have right below it is passante, which means heavy and ponderous. Uh, this also can tell us a little something about the tempo. So we have marziale and passante. So we have a march, but it's heavy and it's ponderous. So we can kind of start using all those words to paint this picture in our head of what the style of this piece should be. So the march tells us it should definitely have a driving tempo, right? We already talked about this. The tempo in this piece does not waver. It does not slow down. It's very steady. And then it should have this weight or this heaviness to it. So keep those words in mind as you're playing this piece. I think it'll help you in how to play it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the performance of the etude and you found these practice tips and audition tips helpful. If you have any questions regarding anything in this video or trombone playing in general or auditions in general, please leave them below in the comments. Please let us know how your practicing is going, how your preparation is going, and good luck on your regional auditions. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can catch the next videos coming up for etudes two, three, four, and five. So see you soon. Thanks. Bye.